Mary Kate, what does it look like when a hospital system runs the retail clinics? And how does that, you know, is, is that seem like it's part of the hospital system? How does that look? And they're very different. So let's talk about Sutter. So Sutter is a for-profit chain, um, high tech, innovative, dare I say expensive, nevertheless. Uh, their whole concept is let's keep people in network, keep all their patients in network, give you a mini Sutter experience. And so they have a closed door design. So when you walk into that minute clinic, you actually know that you're inside their Sutter Express Care. And it's high tech and it's got all of their sort of look and feel and branding and all the technology. And their whole position is we've got one record continuity of care. And so for them, these are almost very fancy billboards. I mean, they certainly see, you know, 15 to 20 patients, certainly in the winter, a lot less in the summer. So are they making a lot of money? Not really. What they're really trying to do is be present in the community. But, you know, I was just talking to a hospital um, yesterday, a community-based hospital, 60 beds, Olmstead, and they're up against Mayo Clinic. By the way, Mayo has a, a retail clinic. And Olmstead is really about... Um, extending their primary care practice out in the community. So they use it to bring people in to actually feed their primary care practice. And they have, um, they're not for profit, they're a small hospital, and their whole mission is to actually get people a primary care um, physician. I was on the phone with someone who's a FQHC, the Federally Qualified Healthcare Center, and this is someone um, actually in Maine, and they were looking at putting a clinic in Walmart, and they said, that's where our patients are. We want them to get doctors. It's the best way to get them into our clinic. And besides, if they don't need to be in our clinic, that's good. We'll treat them there. But now we know that they can get a medical home and we can too. So very different goals, very different ideas behind healthcare systems of what they're doing. So doctor, I'm sure people are wondering, you know, why doesn't Arrowhead just open up a clinic and, and it's probably cheaper than having your patients come to the ER and wait 12, you know, wait four hours, three hours, two hours, even one hour to be seen. Why not do that? Yeah, it's actually 30 minutes, but... Uh, 30 minutes, well, that's, that's, uh, I no, bet I'll people you, in the Los no, Angeles no, actually, County the, Public Health System no, would want No, this that. is important because I want to... We, we created an innovative triage system in the emergency room. Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, a county hospital for County of San Bernardino, is the second busiest ER emergency room in the state of California after LA County, USC. It sees 400 patients per day. Uh, so you can do it. You can take a county hospital, create an innovative system where you can cut down the wait time to half an hour from several hours. But the reason these patients do not belong in the emergency room, it's expensive. It's a waste of resources. They should be taken care of in a completely different area. As I said, I don't have a problem if it is just another site of an integrated system are just another site of your doctor's office. There is, that is, the, all the help you need afterwards, if you need, is there. But just to be there, won't buy a drugstore, so I have a huge problem, and I, I, I know I keep repeating that one, but it is a problem for me. So the reason why Arrowhead Regional can't open clinic in Walmart is because Arrowhead Regional Medical Center is licensed by Department of Public Health. Even if we put a clinic in Walmart, it has to follow all those licensing requirements, which no small retail clinic can follow. So that's why you, we can't put what, what hospital can do is though, if there is a nonprofit entity or a community of QHC kind of uh, clinic, we work with a lot of QHCs, we can give them the support structure behind for them to work with us for the other needs of the patients, uh, cancer, uh, uh, any, any, any GI problem, anything else in medicine, hypertension, stroke, anything else where you need a comprehensive care, you, we can provide that, but we can't put a clinic there. So Mary-Kate, I'm, I'm you know, curious, there was an article last month in the Wall Street Journal that talked about retail health clinics trying to move toward uh, treating more complex illnesses, mm -hmm. whether it's asthma or osteoporosis. And when we were talking before, you had talked about um, you could, some of them may offer Botox. And, you know, so w is that where we're going? I mean, are we going to beyond the ear infection, beyond the flu shot toward, you know, treating more complex conditions and having protocols for childhood asthma or working toward um, offering, you know, things that we may not be talking about in the context of this conversation? Sure. I mean, the retail clinic started with acute episodic care, and in part they started that way because the consumer really understood that. And so, you know, that was about five years ago, and what they've slowly done is tried to say, what does else the consumer want to do here? The brand promise is convenient care by a healthcare professional. You can get lots of convenient care, but you don't need the healthcare professional, right? We all buy OTC products, 
And, and by the way, we're all getting smarter. Did you know that 700 prescriptions are now available OTC? So that's a great example of a shift in provider from a physician to Dr. Mom. We're much smarter. We can now self-prescribe through the OTC. So what clinics are starting to say is, well, what else does that fall under? Healthcare with a healthcare professional that's convenient. So the latest ones we've seen are asthma management, um, acne management, weight loss, smoking cessation. So a lot more of the wellness programs. And I think we all know that it's a lot smarter to spend money on prevention and wellness. And what we're starting to see is for those kinds of things, you can get people into the clinics. There's a great program around teen smoking um, and you can get teens into these clinics. Um, you know, you can get more people in more frequently for some basic care. Um, no clinic wants to be a, or can be a primary care provider. And every clinic's pushing really hard to get everyone into the doctor's office. It's not enough doctor's offices.